Inconsistent. We're gonna not gonna call this guy, right? One, two, three. <laughs> We're back. Okay, keep three, going. Two, one, one, two, three. All right. So basically, what it comes down to is this: you got Russia, right? We assumed Russia was the second most powerful army in the world. Okay, it was between Russia and China, right? Everybody in the world fought this before they attacked Ukraine. Now that they attack Ukraine, everybody's looking at Russia like, you guys are nothing. Or everything that you, we thought you were was just you talking crap and showing us fake stuff. You guys aren't a real world. Um, actually, can you lower that a little bit? Oh, my God. You lower it. No. Anyway, we don't want uh, what you were saying about how powerful you are was all BS. It was just you boasting. You know what I'm saying? Who's we? Um, Russia. Was just you, They were just lying. About how strong they were? How strong they were. They were not. Lying strong. ass. Y'all so weak. They were like, yeah, we have a, mil- a billion soldiers or whatever. I, need, I made up a number, but they got a lot of soldiers. They're literally going in there to die. And the Russian people know it. And they're literally breaking their legs on purpose so they don't go to war. The Russians. The Russians. There's... That's La- considered a crime here, right? Uh, I think so. Muhammad but you got to get caught. No, but Muhammad Ali didn't break anything. He just said, I'm not going. All right. So. Um, he literally just broke the rule. Another thing is that last month or the month before, I haven't looked at the new numbers, but it's the highest rate since the beginning of the Ukraine war of Russia giving themselves in. Like, hands up, take me in, I give up. And it's not that they're doing on the battlefield. Um, underground people passing notes and texting each other. There's a phone number that goes out, and they're like, "Hey, if you're if they recruit you, not recruit. What's that? Called? What's that called when they force you? I forgot what's called. When they force you to go to the army. Oh gosh, draft you. When they draft you, yeah. And I don't know anything. Yeah. Yo no say nada. When they when they draft you, if you don't want to go and you don't want to die, call this number and we'll tell you where to meet us. So these guys, they call the number when their army sends them and they meet up with the Ukrainian soldiers. Like, hey, show up with no guns, no nothing, we hands up. And then they basically take them in and they, they take them into, I think, Poland or something like that. Like they literally be like, look, we, you can't go back to Russia because they're going to freaking kill you if you go back. You gave up. So we're going to get rid of you guys. You know, we're going to spread you guys around. And you guys, are, you guys are free to go. Go where? Wherever. We just let you go. You don't want to fight in the war, but you want to get out of Russia. So we're just going to get rid of you. And you think the, some of them switch sides? Yeah. I, I mean, if they don't want to fight. I don't think they're going to switch that. They just want to get rid of it. They just want to get out of here. So for Ukraine, they're like, okay, we're depleting the soldiers. We're not even firing a shot. We're just depleting the soldiers, you know? So Russia's on a thing right now where they're, they're literally drafting everybody. They got to get all these guys. Um, all their military weapons that they were like, they got the second largest military. All weapons from World War II era, all beat up. Pieces were stolen because they weren't used for so long. People that worked to watch them were stealing parts and selling the metal. So they were missing parts. You know what I'm saying? So it was bad. You know what I'm saying? So we realized, every the world realized how bad Russia is. And now we're looking at China. Like, we know you got a lot of people, but we know that your technology is just as bad as theirs. So you guys are not as strong as you say you are. Now they're talking about attacking Taiwan, China. Okay. Which we're going to be like negative. We've already said to Taiwan, we got your back. Yeah, yeah. Okay? That's not going to happen. Um, the space between China and Taiwan is only 100 miles. So on a boat, you can get there easily. But the United States can see it coming. As soon as they see it, we learn from Russia. Russia bought their soldiers and tanks up to you the You know border. what 100 miles is? Long Island. Go ahead. Yeah. So Russia bought their um, soldiers up to the border of Ukraine. And they're like, we're not going to do nothing. We're just doing military drills. That's all. And then they cross the border. So now we know if we see China doing the same thing. They're plotting. We're plotting. So we know they're not doing military drills. They're doing something, you know. So, and America, because... Taiwan makes semiconductors, which everybody uses. That's in your car, your phones, and everything. 
It's America a made a deal with Taiwan saying if you get attacked by China, invaded, we will launch our missiles and destroy your facility so China doesn't get their hands on it. So currently right now, America is building semiconductor facilities in America because they expect it to get destroyed. They're already getting it ready. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's hard to see a World War Three. That's what. That's why I'm. <sighs> because I feel like what we're really describing is nukes. That's it. There's no World War Three. No, there's annihilation of fighting, and because okay, if it's true, what we're seeing going on in um. In Russia, that they're that weak. If that's true, and now they know we know, then if I was Putin, I would be like, okay, I'm going to show you my my nuke button. That's yeah, going to be that's going to be it. They would be able to hit Ukraine and maybe some other European nations with a nuke. They can't hit America with a nuke because America will shoot it down. Easily, you know what I'm saying? We got cruise missiles that'll knock it right out the sky, no problem. Mm. We would see it coming a mile away. We see a launch, you know what I'm saying? Plus, they're talking about World War II era nukes. We'll see it coming from a mile away. Yeah, but still, still what? We we'll destroy it. Yeah, but the radiation alone, don't you think that'll affect the whole entire planet? Oh yeah, that's that. That's what I was telling uh, Mike before. It's a new, uh, what is it called? Nuclear, nuclear, mutually assured destruction. Meaning, at country to country, if you shoot that nuke, it's the end of the world. Yeah. Basically, we got a gun to each other. If you pull the trigger, you're dead too. You know that, right? Right. You're saying that the, your bullet, we could stop it from reaching us. Yeah. What I'm saying is that the bullets are going to be shot and that air is going to travel like everything else. So. The best bet for every, every country in the world, the best bet don't launch those nukes. And China's not going to beat America. China can't make it to America. So I was that book I was reading, the guy was explaining how China doesn't have the, the, the naval capacity to even make it to America. Their ships can't even reach us. They run out of fuel. They need to be refueled. They're, they, they're not big enough. Japan can. But Japan's on our team. So we're not worried about Japan. Yeah, we already fought them. We already we made them what they are today. We've built them up as a country. You know what I'm saying? Because we because we destroyed them. Yeah. So we so Japan's our allies. You know what we did? Yeah. <laughs> Japan's our allies. So Japan's technically Japan's navy is stronger than China's navy. <sighs> now J- China's army is stronger than Japan's army, but they have to get to Japan. And they need the navy to do that. And China, Japan's navy is not going to let them reach. They'll never make it. So if they can't even make it past Japan, how are they going to make it to the United States? There's no way for them to get us. You know what I'm saying? Unless they got some shit that they were hiding. Our satellites haven't been able to see. Maybe. If you want to look up a map of the of the the, the, the Chinese Sea, you got um, South Korea. I mean, South Korea, our allies. You got Japan, our allies. You got so the Philippines, our allies. They're literally surrounding it's China. Literally a cluster. They of can't them. leave that area without getting destroyed. So if they tried, and it's not like they're gonna march to America. God, I don't want to. I don't want to live here because of like World War Three ideas. Yeah, because New York, they're gonna hit us first, right? Right. Yeah. Imagine there. Yeah. That's why I'm not worried about any. I can't imagine. <sighs> now, if we're talking about Russia and China. That everybody expected to be the most powerful countries in the world. If we know they're not going to mess with us, nobody else stands a chance. And most of the other ones are part of us anyway. Yeah, most of the other ones are our friends. So the United States has the most strongest Navy by far. By like triple or something like that. Crazy. It's like insane. We literally... The minute we p- were able to put nukes in subs and just have them chilling... Yeah, they're done. We won. Game we're over. talking about submarines that can stay underwater... Forever, yeah. almost, and they're next to you. That are powered by nuclear fusion and have nuclear weapons. Does Russia? Ha- Russia has that shit too. Yeah, but Russia the, got that the, shit. What uh, the problem with Russia too is that there are uh, there we're corrupt. Our America's a corrupt country. 
Russia is beyond corrupt. There are people that this guy, I forgot the guy's name. I don't know. Some people would say that we're pretty beyond corrupt. Those people are conspiracy theorists. The the guy that was in charge of um, training the army after the, the Ukraine Russian started thing, you know, started everybody saw how bad Russia was doing. They started doing some investigation to find out what the hell was this guy doing the whole time. He was basically stealing the money from the Russian government and only training the soldiers to do uh, parades because that's all Putin saw when they came marching you know, with the freaking tranks. So Putin was like, "Oh, they're doing a good job." Meanwhile, there was no real training going on at all. There was no behind the scenes, you know, shooting and you know doing. There was, it was none just of that. a show. It was just a show because he was stealing all the money from all that stuff. All the uh, they were supposed to build like uh, a million tanks or whatever. He basically stole ninety percent of the money for himself and built like forty-five, just so everybody can see it. Ah, oh, that's so. And good. he was doing that for years, and that, and then now that Russia, so now you Putin is like, yo, what's up with my freaking? He's like, oh yeah, um, you know, we're backlogged. Uh, you know. You think that um, you think that uh, you think that Putin is Tabiho ya? He's like senile. You think Putin's like Biden, like Takalao? What I heard is that he has some sort of. There's some sort of cancer or something. I don't know. You never know. What but doing. mentally, is he sane? Is my question. I, I think he's just super paranoid. You know what I'm saying? How old is he? I don't know. He's not that old. He's got to be pushing 50, 60. He's not that old, bro. It's just a paranoid I gets to. You know what I'm saying? That guy. In fact, the, the, the you got to read that book, bro. The guy from China, the president of China, he's even worse than the guy from Russia. He's actually killing people. So wait, well, basically what they you got mean with, King Jong Un? No, no, Xi Jinping, the president oh. of China. So what the guy was explaining was at least Russia, Putin would sit down with some of the other leaders within Russia and they'll talk. You know what I'm saying? Okay, what about this? And they'll, they'll tell him bad news and he'll try his best to try to work around it. In China, you cannot tell him bad news. He won't accept it. So they basically lie to him all the time. So he never gets real information about what's going on in the country. And the, one of the last pieces of information where they were saying how they got like a census to find out how big the population is. And uh, when they got the numbers, later on was revealed that the numbers were way off. They don't have as many people as they thought they did. And the numbers that were way off was the young people. So they were, instead of being, you know, let's say there's 45 billion or something, I'm, I'm 45 million, I made up a number. It's actually 40 million. And the people that were missing are all under 40. They were fake people that were made up. So they, they thought they had more young people than what they actually do. So because they don't have enough young people, you know, you need young people to have babies. So they're expecting the next two or three generations, they're going to be very low in population. So they got the boom now, but they jacked themselves up. China. Yeah, they're, they're, they're for the next... Um, I can read, see that. You got to read this book. The guy's like, China's... I can see that. It makes sense. He's like, China's going to be a collapsing nation because they have... their dollars a week. They don't have a real government... Um, like connection like we do like we have 50 states and their know. biggest threat is us democracy the idea that's yeah. the biggest poison well their biggest poison was a freaking one child policy they had that that's gonna kill the country right Ge as far as genetics and genocide like yeah. they, they self-destruct their so, they got a lot of pingas but not a lot of wombs yeah. to make the baby so like in toasty. america we need people because people work they pay taxes they produce in china because they have more older people than younger people by a lot there's not enough people that's paying taxes or whatever to pay for the older people retiring. You know what I'm saying? So they're, the younger people aren't, they're not making enough money to keep the country afloat. You know what I'm saying? And after all these old people die, now the population has shrunken down to so much. And they were saying, uh, the guy was explaining how most of the population are within the cities. So most of the people live in the cities. Now, when you live in the cities, you don't have a lot of kids. When you, have, when you live in the farm, you have a lot of kids. Yeah, because those niggas become your workers. Some people in the cities don't even have kids. They don't want kids. I'm living My it up. Oh, gosh. So he's like, this is adding to the bigger problem. So in like in 20 years. Well, he said by 2030, we're going to see a sharp decline in the population of China. In China. Yeah. So Damn. he's like, whatever moves that China has to make to Taiwan, they have to do it before a certain point. So there's kind of like a time limit. Do you think that that... Their, their answer to that, they know it's coming. So their answer to that is, <clears throat> let's incubate and create some little uh, human farming. 
They could do that, but even if they did that, how long it takes to grow a person? Like, before you can have a like a uh, person nine months. No, but I'm saying like before you can have a person that can really be productive in life. You we're talking about eighteen years. All right, so you know what I'm saying? So you, three thousand. Even million. if they do a million, it'll take eighteen years for them to get to the people to be you know producers. But all those are females. And if they do that, then they, you know again another eighteen years on top of that. Yeah, but if they did like a million women only in eighteen years, eighteen women. <laughs> For all those guys, have, <laughs> why do you laugh like a pervert? Because so, they're yeah. gonna have too many women and not enough guys now. Yeah, but they instant in okay, but instantly in eighteen plus another eighteen, they well, we're we're, we're talking about American China. That probably, would mean that each China, of those we're, women we're talking about fifteen would be ordered China. to have like babies off the. Yeah. So what I was reading was the guy was saying how no, they, unless you just make more babies. They had a they had a an agency in China that would make sure you only have one kid, right? Yeah, that agency turned into it morphed into as time progressed, it helping people have kids, encouraging them to have kids, make them more fertile. Yeah, and Toma. they're, and they're mm. like even with this agency helping people, with Viagra, them, they're still not they're still not producing as fast as they need to. Yeah, but if you put everybody in an incubator cell, get a billion to uh, two just. We got two billion Chinese dudes. What do you dudes? mean by incubator? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it still takes 18 years to have a person produce anything. Yeah, but if you pr- there's 18 Chinese niggas, right? Ding a ling a lings, penis is roaming in, in China over there. Mm-hmm. So you just make a two billion incubated fetuses, bang. And then you gotta wait 18 years. But that's it. In 18 years, you solve the problem. If they survive that long. The 18 the the babies. The the country. Oh, the country. No, because, they will because the population is shrinking. Up. They don't have enough pe- uh, people working to keep everything. Up. He was talking. He was talking about um, rice, Jeez. rice, rice fields. They're not going to have enough people working the rice fields to produce the food to feed the country in the next few years. Technology, they don't have it either. They don't have the, They don't make technology. They we just, make technology. They just make made in they China. S- they steal technology. Yeah. So if they steal the technology, the technology they have to steal is old stuff that we have already made. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but they're not improvising. They don't got niggas improvising over there, thinking outside the box. They don't got an Elon. No edu- baby Elon. Their education level is not as high as ours. They don't have that. But when and you steal people, shit, you don't analyze what you fucking stole. But, and then the, a lot of the people that do get the education that they need use that as an opportunity to leave that poor country. Ah, uh, to get rich and get out. They want to get out, just like <gasps> just like doctors in Cuba. Uh, Cuba produces so many doctors, but they all leave as soon as they get the first chance. Yeah, but all they could do here is become home health aides. But they use that as an opportunity to get out. To get out, because it's still better. It's better. Uh, China's a third world. Why don't country. people realize how good it is here? We Everybody knows how good it is. Everybody comes here. No, the ones that complain. America. Because they grew up here. They don't know anything else. Selfish. That's what they, they like, bring it back to the Cubans. That's what the Cubans say. Like, you Americans have no idea what you got here. And they keep, that's why they come. That's why they vote for uh, Republicans more often, because they're like, you guys are trying to get rid of the country that we're trying to get into. We're fighting to get into the country, and you want to get rid of it. Like you could still die going outside in America. Oh, one hundred percent. There's no guarantee that you you will die. I was reading this thing. The guy was saying how, but the chances of dying in America versus listen, 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 Linda. If you catch malaria in America, you'll be fine. If you catch malaria in China, you're going to die a horrible death. Bro, you didn't hear about the little if Dominican kid? you diarrhea kid? in China, you're I dead. feel like I got diarrhea right now. Yeah. Listen, the, the little kid, the little the little freaking five-year-old that went to DR with his parents and died. Wow. I don't know that. Yeah. They don't have the technology. And we go there. They're, they're right there. They're right. That's what, Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. So the, the first of all, they're Americans. They went to go visit over there, uh, and the parents posted up, "Oh, we're going to DR." Da 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 da. Hey, 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 hey. And they rolled up to kidnap them, and but they tried to peel out, and the bullet hit right in the kid's brain, died in the hospital. Now, why did they rob them? Because they know America has money. That's why they rob them. Again, that country's right. Right there. There. We can go there right now. They got like nine people locked up and looking for more. But and that's right. Puerto Rico was part of America. And the the and, most scariest thing is the cops over there. And I wouldn't want to go to the Puerto Rican hospital. Have you, you know ever? What I'm no, God forbid. 
<laughs> I'd rather be sick over here. I don't want to go to another hospital. I heard the Spanish version of that, God forbid. I heard that. <laughs> but damn, bro. Like, Puerto Rico's right there. I don't want to go to Puerto Rican hospital. Oh, my God. It looks crazy from the outside. It looks like a jail. It looks it like does. a prison. It looks like a freaking prison. But not like a prison. Even our prisons look nicer compared but to But that's what I'm saying. So imagine China. China, most of the population is third world country. Meaning they don't have electricity. They don't have toilets. Most of their country. China's a gigantic nation that has 10 cities max. Packed. And they're all along the coast. It's like sardines. They're like... And then you have a large swath of China swath like that. Ooh. That's that's desert. That's unmanable. So you Florida. can't even you can't even grow f- food there. They can't regeneration that that shit. They don't have the technology. <laughs> I don't think you understand, bro? They can't do it. So you think it's propaganda that they're instilling this fear that that China's gonna just like Russia, like we talked about Russia. It's all propaganda. But who's pumping this shit? The country. No, but who over here? Like you know who the person that's been on our show, our yeah. little Alex Jones. Okay, so that Alex Jones guy, he's talking about how powerful Russia is. Because why? They feed it. Remember Trump got elected? Russia propaganda. It's true. We found out from Facebook that is all a bunch of Russian farms that were pumping up Trump to make him get elected. It was Russia that helped. That, that yeah, helped. Proof in fact, we know exactly. We know the exact location of the freaking company that. So had. Russia wanted Trump. Russia wanted Trump. They, not that they specifically wanted Trump. They wanted a, a candidate that was going to cause division. Oh, so their their end game was to get niggas to fight, to and they won. To, yeah, they won. They fucking won. That's right. You know they won because you fought with you. You didn't go to Thanksgiving that year. You don't want to talk to him. So the point is that I definitely didn't go that one year. I went to Jeremy's house. <laughs> so, but the point is that they're pumping up Fox News with this information. Let's just say, and Fox News is spreading it to your Alex. Would Jones. you be able to be a journalist? No, knowing that, that you're fucking lying. No way. Like we were talking but, about Anderson Cooper. Was that the, the other episode? Shit, yo. This no, is what no. We were talking so about Don, episodes. Don, Don Lemon, Lemon and uh, what's his name? That Tucker, was last episode, right? Charco Carlson. That was like two hours ago. Damn. So, but you think, do you see what I'm saying? Like as a journalist, I would want to report the truth. Yeah. Nothing but the truth. Like, but at, if, at least what I could discover. But if they paid you more. To be like. Just say that. Donald Trump gets arrested again. But again, these people probably believe it wholeheartedly. You know what I'm saying? Like, they really believe what they're saying. So. I mean, at least for the most of I don't think Chris Wallace was believing that shit. Been but, there. okay, let's say Don Lemon. Don Lemon definitely believed the crap he was saying. because Hell yeah. Because in the back, it was revealed. In the background, he was talking crap about it. Yeah. Oh, but they I'm, recorded him too, right? I don't know if they recorded, but they got text messages from him saying, basically, I'm black. I can't be racist. I can say whatever I want. Ooh. Wee. Now, logically, that doesn't make sense, but he believed the narrative because he was saying it. And he would pr- pr- preach it on the news. He would propagandize to the world. And he convinced he convinced young niggas listening to this right now that is that you could, that that's true. Logically, makes no sense, but you believe it. You just ate it up. You ate it up because you want you want to be the right guy. You want to have all the right information. I want to be the powerful one, not you. So you want to believe it. That's it's, crazy. It's the same thing with conspiracy theories, all that. You want to be the guy. I want to be the smart one in the room. So I'm gonna believe something you don't believe. You don't know what I know. I know the real information. You don't know nothing. That's what it is. I want to be the guy. Instead of being the guy, just just find out what ha- what really happened. I don't understand. Who cares? If, who gets the information? We just want the truth. Why do I care where the truth comes from? I just want to know the facts so I can make a proper decision. You know what I'm saying? I just want to be the one who delivers it. Yeah, why do I... I don't even care who delivers it. Just give me the facts. You know what I'm Th- saying? That was Donald Trump. I want to be the one who delivers it. Yeah. He and did. they got p- he pissed him off. I'm not saying that what Trump did was good or bad. Right or wrong, better said. Because there's stuff he said that was right and there's stuff that he said was dumb. You know what I'm saying? But his... His... Well, his uh, what's, the word, what's the word I'm looking for? He's like a narcissist. Like, it's about me. That, That's what I'm saying. That ruined him as a candidate from a lot of people. They don't want to... Like, I, if you had to ask me, 
do you want Trump to run for president? His I, character's not favorable. His character. That presidential image That's that all it is. still matters somehow so, to this day. Even though they, the, uh, this morning I was saying or looking on something and they were like, most people don't want these both these niggas to run. No, nobody wants them to run. They're both they're both, both of them. Fresh guys. Biden and Trump, pa fuera. So the thing with Trump is, and this goes with any presidential candidate. And that DeSantis is not, he's not even going to. Yeah. If you're not a likable person, whether you care or I care, doesn't matter. I don't care who, what kind of person, the way Donald Trump talks. In fact, when he ran for the first time for president, that was fantastic. I loved it. The stuff he was saying. You know yeah, saying? no, we're going to get another Obama. But the problem is. A maverick. A person like that is divisive and people are not going to want to vote for that. Right, because what we're looking for is an Obama, a we maverick. Want a, we want a nice guy. We want you know a maverick. We want a. Bring them together. Yeah, we want a nice. Or Reagan to get a little sprinkle of a Reagan, JFK. Oh, yeah, we want Obama. Basically, that's what we want. We want yeah, that's want the best. Way, that's the best way. Now, do I care? I don't care. But if I had to choice, I would say don't run for President Trump. You should be like the elder and help out the next. Become guy. the vice president. Not even vice president. Just be the guy in the guy's ear. Ooh, like get Obama's his phone number. Doing to get Biden. his phone number and text him. You know what I'm saying? Well, they, you know, let's say I'm running for president. That, not, that, 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 that. You see how I got frustrated just hearing you say that? Yeah. That's Trump. Yeah, I'm exactly. a narcissist. Are you exactly. that loca? But that's why, I got to be the one that says it. But that's, that's my why, idea. That's my problem with Trump. If he was just a chill guy. Yeah, but I do need. I do feel like we do need the that pair of balls with what's going on everywhere. Well, else. you can have balls without acting like that. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. You got to act like that. No, you don't. You just got to make a red line. Like, hey, look, if you cross this line, I'm bomb the shit out of you. No, no, no. You just got to be an asshole like that, I think. You have to. Be, I mean, he got invited by King Jong Un. Oh, we invited him. They got to think about that. Whatever that juice well, that he remember, has. No, no, but remember. They respect No it. president before him ever even tried. This is what I'm saying. We need someone that's like. Listen, I'm a good boba. What do you want? What's some some yeah, but you, chicken nuggets? But you, you, want, can, you could do that. You without, want some happy meals? Because that <laughs> shit comes with toys. But you could be that without. Being, I don't think so. I they, so. They, he was respected. You could be. Obama was respected. Dow. Obama wasn't respected. Obama was bombing the shit under the freaking cloak. Exactly coat. what I'm saying. You're proving my point. You can be that guy without acting like right, that. Right, right, right. I guess. But it's more fun with Trump. It, it is more <laughs> fun. So I'm not going to lie. It is fun. It, that's what I was saying, though. When he first ran for president, I was loving it. The stuff he was saying. Donald Trump is Dennis the fucking menace that grew up. When Trump told and, Hillary Clinton, it's because you'd be in jail. That was it. I was like, ooh, beautiful. That was uh, it. Never has something Only got Rosie O'Donnell. That was one of the best lines. Well, they were like, you called women dogs and fat. And he was like, only Rosie O'Donnell. I was like, yes. But but for a person now running for president, times has changed. You can't be like that. I don't think so. You're going to put I, a bad... So think I think about, about his character. In, imagine interjecting that persona, the Trump persona as a candidate for the office of the president of the United States of America in the 60s. It would be blasphemy. It would yeah. be television would be, blasphemy. Yeah, we'd be talking about right now history books. It'd be amazing. But let's imagine you're, the, you're a nice guy. You just, you know, look, I'm a straight shooter. I'm going to tell you the facts, and that's it. I don't want to I don't want to diss anybody. I'm going to call you out if you're wrong. I'm, I'm going to say I agree with you. You're right. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. None of that stuff matters to me. Because the, the, whether you are a Democrat or Republican... The only thing you should think about is how can I make this country better? You shouldn't worry about my team winning, your team winning. We yeah. should work together. Yeah, but that... that <laughs> Why do we... <laughs> that's the guy that we need. We don't need the guy that's like, I'm a Republican and whatever the Republicans say, we're going to do. Because then the guys that vote for Democrat are not going to want you. You have to say, hey, look, we're going to do this together. Because we're not each other's enemy. The enemy's over there across the water. Those are the bad guys. Yeah, but I, we got to make each other the enemy so I can get the votes to win. That's the problem. Because I want to be but in charge. But that's the propaganda. What? That we just said. I want to be the one, so I got to make the enemy. So that means you got to cause division. You got to cause propaganda. That's the, that's what CNN and Fox are doing. You think that Trump had something directly to do with Russia 
throwing that propaganda or no? No, I don't think he's a because pendejo. Russia's I don't think he knew anything about it. <laughs> I honestly don't think he, he was just being Trump and he was he was uh his shit don't stink, you know what I'm saying? Whatever Russia was putting out, he was loving. He was like, Oh yeah, these people are talking. He didn't think no they were Russia, he thought it was people. And yeah, they love me. Look at the internet, they love me. There was points where Trump tweeted. Remember, he had Twitter back in the day. Oh yeah. He tweeted mm, stuff good that times. he tweeted stuff that came from those Russian farms. He tweeted, he retweeted stuff from them. But he didn't know. He thought they were regular guys. Wow. Remember at the time they were talking mad crap. They were like, oh, Trump loves Putin. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Now, that, now what? Yeah, now what? Now right? what? Meanwhile, Trump. Trump stopped a lot of things that would have benefited Russia. He was like, we're not doing that. We're America first. Was it, did Russia succeed in the division? Yes. If Russia, if that was their goal, they succeeded heavily. And they're still succeeding. Yeah. When it comes to the propaganda, yes. Because America's Americans love to be right. Mm. So if you give me information that makes me feel like I'm right, I'm going to believe. Whether it's true or false doesn't matter to me. It makes me feel good. I want to believe it. I'm right. You're wrong. This is the proof. Yeah. Whether if it's what if and it's if fake? Trump wins, he's that's all his four years is gonna be. It's just yep. It's gonna be all over another another show. Another show. Another show of us fighting about stupid. Because he got shit done. Yeah. Hold on, but this time I feel like it's just be a show. He could probably still get done, things done. But mm. but this is why I say Trump should be texting the guy. Let's say you run for president or I run for president. And I told Trump, look, here's my number. Whenever something comes up, let's say Russia, Ukraine, tell me what you think. What would you do in this situation? But also, I would give it to my number to Obama. and I would give my number to every... I don't care what party you come from. Give me, give me the information. I want to know what you would do. And I would take that. No, okay, this makes sense. Yeah, but that seat also that's that chair, that position, that title also I believe um produces narcissism. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard, bro. You gotta you gotta just suck it up and be like, hey look. And I think that very few presidents that's why I've always said this. I've always thought this rather. I've always thought that it's your last job. Yeah. Think about that, it right? It's just, <laughs> it, it's right there, you're proving the point. The net, no, it shouldn't be. It's not. Yeah. Diggers go on to do other things, but not a formal job, right? They'll go to write books. They're not going to freaking work at McDonald's. Uh, even Carter. Yeah. What is he doing? He builds houses. For what? For the homeless. For what? Free for habitat humanity, yeah. For free, but like there's no other. But he didn't get sucked up by that freaking. Narcissism. What's the greatest accomplishment as an American that you can think of? Any president or who? What's the greatest accomplishment as a citizen of the United States of America? Becoming the president of the United oh, yeah. States of America. There's nothing to do after that. Yeah. Like you know what's after that? Depression. No, because you you spend money trying to make you spend time trying to make money. I think instantly I, I think about Michelle Obama and Bush hanging out in the stadium. Yeah, joking around. Meanwhile, they were opposite teams. You're supposed to hate each other, yeah. but <laughs> they're chucking what, it up. We need stuff like that again. We need the president of the Democrat and Republican. We need these guys to be like, yo, we're. we're oh, wouldn't that be dope if the next president be like, yo, Trump, Biden? Oh God, Biden, come, vente, vente. Keep them awake, guys. Give them some more adrenaline. <laughs> uh, but no, no. But even Trump, give us some, you know, whatever. Like, you know what? Bring this guy a cheeseburger, please. Exactly. And, and yo, let me, what do you guys think about the, that'll be crazy. That'd be great. That'd be great. That would be great. But that's what you need. You need a guy that's going to be like, I'm not the president of the Republicans or the Democrats. I'm the, Repub I'm the president of America. So if someone can run as an independent or libertarian whatever. or some whateverness. They could probably and run for Democrat or Republican, but it, that name is going to automatically bring a division. So you have to be independent or something. Like that's that. what I'm saying. So if, uh, if it's a if if a go between can run under that banner, yeah. I mean it's tough because we know we're not going to get rid of guns. We know that the that's what I'm saying. We know we're not going to get rid of certain things. I mean abortion. Wow. Yeah. That, but that's what I'm saying. As a president, you got to say that first and foremost. 
I'm the president of the people that want guns and the people that don't want guns. So I have to make both of y'all happy. We have to find a middle ground. Yeah. You got to do that. People that want abortion and don't want abortion. This, I, I'm a Christian. We have to find a middle ground. Atheists and Muslims, we got we to gotta find a middle ground that we all can be like, hey, we're making a flat playing field. We're all going to play together nicely. Under the party of... Purple, not red or blue. A gay rainbow flag. I don't Purple, because that's what you get with red no, and blue. I want to make a gay flag. I want it to be the rainbow for the nose arc. That's what I'm going to tell you. A boat and the flag. Yeah. The boat on the flag. So, I don't I don't think we're going to get that this time around, to be honest with you. I think it's going to be straight we up. We don't even have a candidate that that's, that's available. Right now. We don't. And that's for both sides. Because yeah. I don't know which one you're talking about. The, 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 the best candidate. I mean, not best, quote unquote. The candidate that we don't know anything about is that Rami Ramachana, whatever his name Who? is. Who? Exactly. He's running for the Republican Party. He's a, I think he's Indian. His ideas are good. They're fine. He's not the perfect presidential candidate, but if I had to choose between Trump, DeSantis, and that guy, I'm choosing that guy because nobody knows who he is. Mm. DeSantis and Trump put a bad taste in your mouth. Ugh. Come with baggage. And there know. is no one on the other side. <laughs> Right, right now, no, because Biden might run again. He can barely walk. He's gonna. You run. think he's? <laughs> <laughs> Tito, I pictured him running like that. You know, like the old people. He's gonna run. fall down the stairs like he did trying to get into the airplane. Ah, uh, this is. Yeah, they they don't have a party. Who they have? Kamala Harris. They don't have a party. She's she, every interview you hear when they ask her a hard question. <laughs> she's just like, she has. No, I didn't read this. She has no answers. She can't talk. She's a fake. Vice president, she should never have been vice president. They but he's it. a fake president too. I feel. Yes. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. We have nothing. We Democrats have nobody. This is why. The, this is why Russia decided to wall out. And this is why Mike even said it too. Mike agreed. Tulsi Tulsi Gabbard should have been the presidential the vice. nominee. Oh. She should have been president right now. She could have beat Trump because she was a Democrat that was willing. To, to cross work the other side. Because she was in the military. So she's like, I know what you guys are dealing with. I've hung out with you guys for the for my whole life. I know what it is. I'm going to reach out to you guys. And to, before she left, whatever she was doing, she would talk to the, when they were doing votes, she would go to the, the Republicans and be like, what do you guys think about this bill? Why don't you like it? Oh, really? I didn't think about that. Okay. Reconsider both sides. Oh, okay. What do you think about the, the pill situation? I don't take drugs. Why you want to get an abortion? Why are you worried about it? It's not too late. What is the pill about? Tell me tell me the story of the pill. I don't know. They're, they're trying to ban the pill. What pill? The abortion pill? Which one? There's so many. <laughs> Damn, I don't know even which one. That's what I'm saying. But I, I don't think it comes down to pills or abortions and no, no. I think there has to be we have to figure out what the middle ground is. What, what, what what's the middle ground in okay. your opinion? I mean, I'm biased. Because, yeah. I'm, because I'm a Christian But Again I'm the president of atheists And people that want to eat babies I'm, I'm president of everybody So I gotta take my Christianity And be like hey This is my personal faith Let me put it to the side For a second here Let me talk about What feels good for the country And we gotta say Okay You guys want abortions Until nine months That's a hard pill to swallow We can't do that Okay You're killing I take the baby out I can survive Why would I kill a baby You know so what I'm compromise We take the baby No The compromise is You gotta eat it If we take it out <laughs> no, the compromise is um, we have to find a, a, a number that we can agree on to say, okay, before two weeks, you can have an abortion. Or and you think the federal government should have say in that? Yes, and only because it's a human and we're killing it. Capital. Capital punishment. So if we're going to kill a human, the government should be involved in that situation. They should have a say in the matter because the government's job is to keep people safe. That's the only point of the government is to keep people safe. All this other stuff they do is extra. If I become president, I said it a thousand times, I'll get rid of so many things. I'll get rid of the, first of all, the Department of Education. I might not get rid of it completely. I want to get rid of it completely, but I will shrink it down to like five people. I would fire everybody. Yo, bro. <laughs> Five people. 
And then, you know what the five people's job is to do? I would go to so many companies and do the same thing. Yeah. Let me see what you're doing. Done. Every different agencies. Why you got so many guys working here? What is he doing? What's the job? What is he doing? What is he doing? Get rid of him. Fire. Fire. What's this office called? What do you guys do? Fire. Get rid of that. You guys like have a graphic design team and, and get rid of him. Just you, hire him. You know what I just you know, you know what I've done, what I do and when because you, you've also you dabbed into the same kind of thing, right? So the home care workers, right? I was telling my direct supervisor, um, the home care workers, you know, you think that uh um you think that we'll see robots replace uh, the home caregivers at the homes, wiping the person's butt, right? That AI robot. And her, the, my direct supervisor's response was, well, I hope not because our jobs are done. And I'm thinking to myself, our jobs are done first before the robots are taken care of. I don't think they will. Uh, no, the office job. Like oh, the office. Her job. job and my job is done before the robot is wiping yeah, 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 the yeah. person's butt. They'll do AI before that. Yeah, hundred percent. AI. Our jobs. Are, she's she's worried. Like oh god, I hope not because then our jobs are done. And I'm like, I didn't say anything, but I'm like, no, no, our jobs are gone. We'll be unemployed way before the robot can go to your yeah, house yeah, and yeah. clean your mom. That robot going to your house. That's gonna be way in the future. We're gonna be way gone. We're gonna be the ones that the robot's yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah. wiping the butt from. You know what I mean? Like so. Yeah, they, I don't think people see them. So the like when you're mentioning the fat in companies, I don't think people realize. And I don't think I think that's why we well, haven't gotten to 100 percent of well, where we were pre-pandemic agencies. Because I'm talking about the whole because companies we're com- still not at 100 percent from COVID. Companies want to slim the fat out of their company because it makes profits. America doesn't. We don't make money off of that thing. We make money for the people that are alive. They give us tax money. Yeah. So the CIA doesn't make money for America. Money they take, you mean? They just take money. Yeah. So regardless if the CIA does their job or doesn't do the job, they're still getting money. But if the CIA if the CIA never produced, and the government said, "Well, you guys are not doing nothing, so we're gonna have to cut some of your budget," then the CIA would be like, "All right, we gotta get on our balls." You that's why that 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 notion of um, our budget is two million. You guys gotta create some way how to create you know spend it because if yeah. not, they're gonna cut us exactly. Yep. Waste. So they're just inflating the budget. For, waste. Yep. It's all waste. That's why I say you need a president. It's going to be like, we're going to slim some of this fat. Why do we need a department like, of education? You know, like NYCHA. Oh my God. The waste. Education. Wait. Every de- major department. Waste. Yeah. What's J- Pete Buttigieg doing? What, what the hell is he? He's gay, isn't he? No, but he's the secretary of the I transportation. Don't, I don't know what he does. This thing is the secretary of some shit that has to do with a lot of shit. Why does he need? What's what's what do we need for transportation? I don't understand. There's no bus that goes from freaking New York. He to, has to, to do with everything that has to move in this fucking country. What's that position? But why does he need that job? Uh, excuse me, because he's a pendeja. No, because <laughs> we have these are people that the president elects in his cabinet to run certain things. The part, the secretary of defense, hmm. the secretary of finance, the te- I, I secretary think- of. Maybe this is more fucking waste. And what I would do is if I was a president and I had to hire these people like to put into the office, I'd be like, all right, secretary, secretary of transportation. I'm going to hire you. But before I hire you, you have to commit to me that you're going to you're going to slim 10 percent of your budget. They do. Before I hire you. The, the mayor, for example, yeah. he just he's, he just went to every major department, including the one you work for. Mm-hmm. And was like he told all the directors, all the people in charge of these ordinances, these agencies that will make the city run that he's responsible for. He was like, I need you to find a billion dollars. Yeah. Well, find it. That's what. Yep. So that's why when we talk about specifically, when we talk about unions. I understand both sides of the argument for a facility. The owner unions are horrible. They're taking all my money. For the worker, unions are fantastic. I understand both sides. Well, the union, the company is not being taxed, right? What do you mean? The, the company is not. It's the you. It's the employee that's paying it to the union dues, yeah. right? So but they, but for the employee, think about what you get for the union. You have a whole. I know, but for, we're talking about the owner. I, I'm. Am I paying the union? No, but the union is going to use lawyers to fight me to get more money out of me. Not only that, but fight for me to keep my job. Like no, I'm saying as an employer. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. The employer is gonna. He don't want the union. Right, because not because they're paying the union 
or they're buying into the union. But the employees are paying into the union. Correct. Yeah. But they're, the reason why it costs them is because it it costs more to operate. Because you have exactly. to invest in other things yes. to run. Medical, you got to do extra. You get contracts, agreements, exactly. lawyers. So for gotta, an owner, you're like, I don't want to hear in here. They're going to destroy me. They're going to take all my profits. It's going to, no, it's, they're not going to take my profits. They're going to bring my overhead higher. Yeah. So, but for the employee, you're like, well, that's great. I got somebody that's going to advocate for me every time. And all this other great it. stuff. Yeah. Contracts get oh, redone. I love it. So yeah, you could see the argument for both. Do you think both are needed? Is there another way of doing it? What, with with unions? And- no, no, no. Is there another way of operating in a society that doesn't involve owner this 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 format? There well, the, the problem is America doesn't run like that. The government doesn't. If the government did run like that, it'd be great because then we'd be run like a capitalism society. Meaning, if it's not making profit, let's get rid of it. You know what I'm saying? Pepsi, crystal like the clear, public library. crystal clear Pepsi didn't exact public library. What when people complain? Oh, we're gonna do the library. I'm like, why do we need the library? I have the library right here. I have the library right here. <laughs> Sorry, oh, there he is. It's right there. Library is right here. You have one too. You're looking at us from it. Yeah. That. So what I think is they should do. I mean, this is my suggestion. If if I was the mayor, I'd be like, look, we're gonna get rid of all the libraries. Sorry. Those buildings are government buildings. We're going to figure out another thing to do with them. Jails. Okay. I don't think jails are too small. But we'll figure out something to do with them. But. Shelters. What we're going to do with the libraries, instead of having them their own building that we got to pay for rent, gas, electricity, all that, we're going to take all the books for the library, all the computer system. We're going to take all that. We're going to invest it into the nearest public school. And we're going to take a section of the school and we're going to turn it into a library. So now the library from the school gets way better. You have one person, a librarian, that's there all the time. They get to open and close at different hours than the school does. You know what I'm saying? So now the school, the school, we already pay for electricity and all that. Now we put them together. We cut that bill out. Maybe a little bit more because it'll be open a little bit, later, little bit later. But all the books. Now when we invest in schools, the library automatically gets money. It's part of the school. We don't have to have a separate budget for the library no more. In the post office? I mean, the post office is a little tricky because where else are you going to send a letter for 15 cents? Well, I would give the uh, the I would give the post office to UPS, FedEx. Yeah. I think if you could figure out a way to contract them and be like, hey, look, we'll make a deal with you to ship our packages, but you have to offer, you have to accept the United States stamps. So if somebody wants to send a letter... They can send it to UPS and it's only, how much is the stamp now? I don't even know. So let's say it's 50, 50 cents. You have to send this letter across the entire country for 50 cents. So give the infrastructure to UPS, the major three carriers, yeah. DHL, FedEx, UPS. Yeah. Give it to these guys. Give them the infrastructure and be like, you guys share the resources, yeah. but the contract is you got to move this letter, yeah. this envelope. And maybe make it so that way you guys have different sections. Like UPS has New York. Like FedEx. you've seen the you've seen the facilities of processing mail? Yeah. So Bro, the, it's a huge machine. And then you tell FedEx, if it has a stamp, United States of America, or it's, it's sent through this kind of postage system we made. If FedEx gives it to you, you have to take it. And you have to continue it on. Use your planes. You ship it off and you drop it off to whatever DHL. They take it the rest of the way. You for the American American mail stamped. All you guys have to share the responsibility. Of the so we give you all the facilities, all the post yep, office. We locations. split it between you guys. You guys use it for your own needs. But when it comes to American posted stamps, you guys have to work together to get it. And you're going over there anyways. Here, take this box with exactly. you. Exactly. For your own mail, you do it yourself. We yeah. don't care. And you could use any facility. You just got to share it with them. And then you say, hey, DHL, if UPS drops off a package for the United States Post Office stuff, you guys have to finish the route. So there you go. We got post office done. We got the library into the school system. What's the other big one? Get rid of Department of Education. We don't need that crap. Department of Education is literally sucking money out of everybody. We don't need teachers that that are bad teachers that we keep hired. We don't need them anymore. They but that have, would mean getting rid of the union. They can do that on their own, on a private school. Let's let's let's, t- let's table school because that's a that's a that's a big one. No, no, no. 
I nah, 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 nah. That's my son, kid. You out. No, no, but I'm saying is this. That's my kid. Wait, nah, wait, nah, hold nah, on, nah, hold nah, on. Nah, wait, nah, wait. Nah. Curtis. School that's over here. Curtis High School. Okay. That school's not that good. Imagine if it was a charter school. That's like the school in um Sunset Park, right next to McDonald's. That's like that one. So what I'm saying is this. Ask any parent out there. Do you want your kid to go to the public school or to a charter school? What do you think most parents would say? Charters. But the zoning rules. Exactly. But wait, wait. Yeah, what are the I, I I think that school is something that you're not gonna get. I can I'm see get the post. I'm gonna get it. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. <laughs> uh, what? You listen, you little conspiracy. I'm trying to get to the other major one that's right, really, I, really I, messed up. Before we do that, I just want everybody to know I'm willing to talk about the Department of Education. Okay, okay. He's willing to talk to nobody who's there. Hold on a second. So because I feel like the post office, that's simple. I see. I feel like it's simple. It's simple. Just give it to these other guys. They're already running around, running and around. And then you take you take the current, the post office employees, and be like, we are the government, are gonna take care of you into retirement after retirement, but we're not hiring nobody else. It's done. It's done. You guys are the last. Generation. You're the last of this breed. And, and then, what you do from here, like they did with the tow workers when they got rid of the booths and the yeah. bridges and whatnot, they put these things to do other stuff, process the tickets. Process the mailing out and become customer service exactly. agents. Just stuff like that. And the then, people in the MTA, the booths, you know what they're doing now? They're outside. Doing what? Talking to people. What? The people in the booths, they signed the contract. They got a little bit more pay. And now they're out there leaving the booths to interact with people. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So similar to that. So those two departments, the the library and the post office, it's logistical. We have yeah. great. Yeah. What what other other than education? What else? Then you start talking about. about big things like defense. Defense easy. You have CIA. You have the FBI. You have those. Why do we paint two different agencies to do the same thing? Because one is foreign, the other one is. Why not have them both do the same thing? Conflict of interest. There's no conflict. We're America. We're America. You take NSA, FBI, CIA, merge them into one company. Now you've turned three budgets into one budget. But they operate a little bit different. Like the CIA are not allowed to operate here. But you make them into one agency that can. I don't know. I guess we could. You know what I'm saying, why do we need? Why do we need them separately? We make them into one agency, and then while you're at it, take the sheriff department and throw them in there too. Why not? <laughs> now Woody Yeah we need Don't no, put Woody So every country I mean every Gosh Every city has their own Police department Every state has their own uh, Federal department f- Not federal department What they call it State police officers And then you have Federals that has Offices within That's willing to Translate the information You take all the Think about it If you get all the information From every From the United States And from across the world You bring it to one central place Now we have all, We have the board with all the information that we can see everything much more clearly. Instead of the CIA only getting the information the FBI decides to give them. Because we've seen countless times where the FBI was missing a little piece of information that the CIA had. And they're like, if we had that one piece, they don't we have to solve this. We don't have faster. now we don't have to worry about any of that. They're all together in one place. One central agency. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, you cut the freaking by a third you cut everybody out you don't need to hire as many people you save all that money you know what I'm saying finance what do you mean well we get first of all you gotta get rid of the IRS we don't need the IRS What's treasury the well we need, kind of need the treasury because we gotta keep the budgets and the books the checks and balances but we don't need the IRS they're useless what yep useless who, uh, who are we gonna give our tax money to the, the, the reason why the IRS even exists is for that is because the tax code is so difficult to understand if it was simpler, you don't need the IRS for anything. There's no, there's nothing for them to look into. It's straight in your face. You know what I'm saying? You pay X amount, you, bro. If, if it was up to me, I'll get rid of income tax altogether. Every penny you make on your paycheck, you keep. It's yours. Yeah, no, that can't happen. Yep, you keep it all. We can't do. Not even Star Trek world. That's allowed. No, you keep it. All yours. Go. Yep. <laughs> all yours. But. The way the United States makes money is instead of paying seven cents for tax for every dollar, make it 20. Damn. Exactly. And that eliminates, I guess that would eliminate like tax the rich, tax yeah, the poor. Exactly. Make, uh, maybe not 20, maybe 15. For every dollar you spend, you pay 15 cents in taxes. 
across the board. But why do I have to pay fifteen cents if I'm only making fifteen dollars and he's making three billion dollars? You're he's not paying, paying fifty cents. If you make the money, you keep it. You don't have to do anything with it. You keep it forever. You never give me money, never. But if you want to buy something, then you give me the money. Mm-mm. You just make it a spending tax, so you can accumulate as much money as you want, and we're not going to bother you. Well, you know what I'm saying. But if Donald Trump buys a building, he's going to give us that fifteen percent. And if you buy that McDonald's burger, you're going to give us 15% of that too. Everybody pay 15% across the board. The only thing I would think add to it maybe is I'll give an option for uh, cities to do um, property tax. Because the property tax is going to help the city pay for the fire department, the plumbing. Infrastructure. Let them figure that on their own. That has nothing to do with the government. You guys talk about it yourselves. You figure out how you want it. For your block. Yep. You figure it out in your neighborhood. Hmm. So New York City, you know, they have, we have our own tax. That pays for all that stuff. You guys figure that out. But don't bother the government. We don't want to hear about that crap. What about the Department of Space Force? I think we should increase the budget. <laughs> Give honestly, them all the money. I, honestly, I think so. Because what's the future? Space. We have to secure that. I think that's the way to go. Jesus Christ. Yep. I think I think Space Force is one of the most important military endeavors we have because it's not just military it's like also ensuring our survival yeah because think about it imagine China decides to put lasers in space what are we gonna do they gotta fly over us and freaking laser us or whatever even if they just launch even if they just drop they're called tungsten rods you know tungsten oh yeah so they just drop it they don't gotta shoot it literally just drop it and this, the momentum will make an explosion and you don't even know a big one. You seen that video with the rods? No, I haven't, I haven't seen it. There was a, a video of, of just that. I, I don't know what it was. I was watching, but, but they, they shot rods into the. So now, but if we had a space force, <laughs> they'll never happen. We never have to. We'll control the space. We have the rods. We have our. We are the only ones with the buttons, though. So not just to ha- have it, uh, uh, not just to live in other planets, but first and foremost to defend. Defend our own well, against our own. Because we got to defend against China and whatever. whatever so if we had the power to destroy from space, wouldn't our next goal be destroy all the nuclear bombs that exist on Earth? That's hard because other people own it. You can't just take their stuff. You know? you it would be a agreement. CIA, FBI, the Sheriff Department. You have to make an agreement with other countries. Like We did that with Russia. No, no. But like, go like, so if I was America, I'd be like, yo, we got the rods. They don't know about it yet. I need every secret en- agency to sabotage every other nuclear plant that we know of. Well, they did that with a... Simultaneously. They did that with a virus. I don't know if you heard about that. They put a virus in Iran's nuclear... Systems. And it destroyed all their freaking things. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but worldwide. Worldwide. Destroyed them. We keep one or two for us just in case we miss one or two. That'll be the... But it won't be a doomsday. But I think once Space Force locks down space... Think about it like this. During World War II... There were certain technologies we didn't have. And because we had a war, now we have this new technology. Right? Are you saying, or is it that once they know that we have the rods, it's like, ah. Uh, yeah, you won. Uh, and America's, America kept the peace in, in the world since World War II. Right? We pretty much kept, even though we fought. A I, few wars? A few wars. We, we kept the peace. We're in, oh, no, we're not. We're you not in now. No. We kept the peace. Think about it like this. Between World War II and World War I, how many years was it? 30 years? Something like that? 30, 40 years? Shit, I don't know the numbers, but it's not a lot. No. So now no, between, like World, 40, War, between World War II and now is a long time. 1940s? You know what I'm saying? So we've kept the peace because we're the only ones with the big guns. You know what I'm saying? As soon as another country comes up with big guns, it's going to be a conflict. It's going to be a problem. So as long as America... As much as people don't like America and think bad about America, we have a conscience as a country. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not going to just blow up Iraq. Or, you know what I'm saying? We're not just going to blow up freaking, uh, whatever, North Korea. We're going to we're gonna figure out a, the best way of action to do it. We're not just going to start killing people. You know what I'm saying? We only kill people that mean harm. You know what I'm saying? Like, right now, North Korea, they're a bad country that we don't want to exist. But he hasn't done anything yet, so we're not going to do anything. And when he does something crazy, then we'll attack him. Like we're Hitler. Huh? Like we're Hitler. Basically, yeah. You do something, we'll do something. As long as you chill, you can live together. Yeah, do whatever you want. Yeah. Swing your arms, go crazy, jump around, run around naked in the field. Nobody cares. Mm. 
But I think Space Force is important because once we're once we develop the technology to put weapons into space, we're automatically developing the technology to bring travel into space. It's so not only are we defending us, we're giving us another place. Yeah, we're learning how to get to space easier and faster. Yeah. Yeah, that would make sense, right? So we have the ability of nuking or destroying anyone first. So we definitely become lockdown superpower until someone else puts rods up there. But in the interim of having that uh, that power and that strength, we're developing other places to go. So not only at that point, not only can other countries not hurt us, even if they destroyed us in Mother Earth, we would have other... Yeah, we've already locked on space. We're in space already. We're in other colonies. Space Force other, will go to the moon, make a little we're base. We're in Mars. Yeah, we've, we've we, got we, Now we're expanding. Now, we, got, we got other planets. Yeah. Now now we're at the point wow. now. Yeah, exactly. That's why Space Force, to me, is important. It's, it's the best one to It's go important for the survival of humanity. Period. Yeah. Wow. Locking down. Because God forbid something hits Locking Earth. down being boss forever. Basically. Well, for a while. But, you know, I, I, I walk down the street... <laughs> And we'll probably leave it at this note. I'm walking down the street and, you know, just as I'm thinking about the past and how, you know, we've influenced uh, the physical world around us as a human species. I also think about like, damn, imagine all this gets destroyed. And that's the next biggest thing that we witness that America's destroyed. And it's like, damn, it's hard to imagine. I'm walking down the street. I'm like, look, look, Chinese people, black people, all the people are here. Why would we do that? Look, this is what society is We all love each other. We love each other. And I'm like, every major society probably thought that at one point that would destroy it. Man, there's a book. I can't remember the title. And the the guy explains how different societies, before they collapsed, all major societies, before they collapsed, dealt with gender issues. Meaning, the difference between men and women, like the the gay and straight and trans, all of them, all of them, and then he goes the last example, the last great example we have is Rome. Towards the end of the Roman Empire, there was a lot of men having sex with boys. He goes, this led to a collapse in their um, society. I mean, that's what China's doing, right? What do you mean? By by default. China only has dicks. Oh yeah, I mean, a lot of them choose to be single because they play video games all day. There's a, there's a, there's so much to that. Yo, you gotta read the book. There's a book. Uh, I'm gonna recommend the book. It's called um, "The End of the World Is Just the Beginning." The guy that wrote the book predicted the Iraq War, not the Iraq War, the Ukraine War, and because the Ukraine War popped off. Everybody was like, oh, snap. We got to believe him. He's a prophet. We got to look into what else this guy said. Uh, and he predicts the collapse of China. He's like, that's the next major part to fall apart. Yeah, I think you should put that in the chat, right? I try to, but Mike doesn't want to believe it. Mike, you know, thank God we didn't call him. This, <laughs> well, other stuff. If you know, this guy said Osama bin Laden is going to be the guy that's going to cause a problem. He wants to believe everything the guy says. This other guy predicted the Ukraine war. I don't want to hear anything. That guy got. There's no uh, consistency. Yeah, I don't know. I think I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm hoping for? I'm hoping that it's just gonna be chill for the next, the yeah. rest of my life. Well, the next, preferably the next few years. Oh damn, the book talks about global warming. I didn't even talk about that. How global warming uh, affects China way worse than it affects almost any other country because of the 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 landscape of China. Yeah, everything flushes itself in. It yeah, doesn't they escape have out. Desert. So he was explaining how you grow rice. He goes, if the global warming changes a little bit, China cannot grow rice. Done. And they have to import because they have to import food. They can't afford it. And rice is like their mega. So this is why China's right now on this big thing where they're like, they want other countries to use their money. They want, they're, they're like, we need to spread it because then it makes it easier for us to buy stuff. Mm. Because if nobody takes you our money. You already have it. If nobody takes our money, then we got to use the American dollars. Ah, yeah. They win. Yeah. What a, what a. And America, even in global warming, America has the most farmland. Even if the temperatures rise, we uh, uh, anywhere else was, in the world. It was we were talking about it. I don't know if it, it was recorded, but we could run stuff on our own. We don't need any other country exactly. technically. So we're just lazy. Yeah. Well, what it is is that we 
made people, in China. People want to people want to get paid a lot to make stuff. So because we want to get paid a lot of stuff, so if you work for a factory, you don't want to get paid freaking four dollars an hour. You want you know you, you want you the want, benefits. You want the exactly. union. So for, to make a product in America costs too much money. So they're like, well, these niggas in China would get paid two dollars a day. That's why we'll the, the NAFTA thing that Bill Clinton passed exactly. was a uh, disaster. So if we brought that back and then put put people to work. It would be really a, a like it would almost be like a revolution on how we we do things. So he predicted that we're gonna see in the next few decades. Remember, he's predicting a lot. He's predicting we're gonna see a lot more factories in America opening up to make stuff, stuff that China makes now. That'd you know what I'm saying? Crazy. So America makes high end products. He expects Mexico to make mid range products, and he expects low range products. To be made in South America, like uh, he he specifically mentioned Colombia. He said Colombia is going to be the next country from South America to really grow up. Yeah, they're definitely doing it over there. Yeah. They had some movement politically in that country. Yeah, um, and they cut ties with the like they cut, cut deals with the cartels yeah. and the. So he's he's expecting he's expecting Colombia to be what Mexico used to be. Because the us. cartels really just like we would just want to own some shit. We'll let you have your government, yeah. But when it comes to certain things, we run. The, we we are the capitalists of this industry. And Cuba's crushing it right now. So they know what's up. They see the they see the silver lining of the clouds. It's coming. America's gonna need. I mean, America. Mexico's gonna need Cuba to make stuff for them. And we need Mexico to make stuff for us. That's why they're out here. That's why they're out here. So that, oh, that's what he's talking another thing. He was talking about with uh, demographics. America, a lot of people don't have a lot of kids, but a lot of America's growth is immigration. Not a lot of countries do that. We're one of the only countries that allow people from everywhere in the world to come. So our, we're growing in different varieties of ways. We don't have to worry about birth rates as much as we do other, other countries because people come here for a better life. So he's like, that's our strength. People want to come here and they want to do stuff. They want to work. You know what I'm saying? And they want to learn too. Yeah. He goes, people from other countries. Or maybe they, their first generation want to work. But, and then they want their kids to become freaking. Yeah. And this comes to full circles when you come, when you talk about people that live and grew up in America, look at America like this is a horrible country. I want to go to over there. Spoil a little brat. they don't understand. They don't, they don't get it. Yeah. There should be. Uh, you think that that should be a curriculum in school? Since for one year in high school, you're going to another country. If you are to be a communist, uh, we'll send you to a communist country for a semester, and you have to live over there. Nah, nah. F what you want. You're just going <laughs> yeah. for a semester. You're just going over there with your classmates, and you're all gonna become really close friends. Oh, I got another one. This is very controversial for me, even because. I'm a libertarian. Even libertarians are like, this is the worst thing you could do. I think every person should join just the way they do in Israel, where between 18 and 20, I think it is, you have to join the military. You have to spend two years serving the military. And I think America would benefit from that. And what I mean by that is that America's biggest problem is broken families. So if you give a young child structure for two years and you have people drill into them responsibility, how to do stuff, you give them a skill while you're there, when they come out, they'll improve the country. And and then on top of that, they'll have combat experience, whether that just be training. Here in America. Wait, we're not going to send them to a war. This is just America doing a training for the country. And then, you know, they make money off of it. You know, America's going to pay them to work. Um, well, so the last those, two years of high school Not the two years of when you graduate high school or You know what I'm saying Like Whatever it is We have to make it so that way Probably the, when you're done with high school 18, 19 And then we'll put America will use these people for work Oh you know We want to improve uh, the, the, the highway This was your civil duty While you were getting this <laughs> yep, training That's it Now you serve your country You know how to use a gun That way God forbid We do get invaded Everybody's trained In the whole country Damn We know how to fight we think about it. If you're another country gonna attack, yes. a, if you're another country why, that wants what's, to, what's coming down? If you're another country that wants to attack America, you already got to deal with an armed populace. 
We already got guns. Imagine if we were trained on top of that. You know what I'm saying? Forget about it. No, country be, we're literally a country of military. Like there's nothing that's gonna. Yeah. That's a good idea. So basically, this episode is vote for, vote for me. Noel, 2024, and at the very least, you will get your garbage taken out. Which I, I want another me. candidate. I have to do that too. I want another guy. I want another candidate. Who? I don't care. I just want somebody to give me their ideas. How they would run the country? You know what I'm saying? I want to hear Trump. Just another guy. Anybody out there? I want to hear what they think about. I want another opinion. What would you do to to? You know what I'm saying? Like. What would you do with the Department of Education? What would you do with, you know, the Space Force? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to hear what they got to say, too. With the, that's why I, I pause the Department of Education, because it's like, it's so touchy. I'm because it. it's it's touchy because of this notion of, you know, so I think education should be free. Education is vital to the... Well, I, I think I think it should be free. Well, it is free for the person for the most part. It is, you know, but just because it's a charter school doesn't mean the parent pays. The government already pays for kids. Why not we pay a profit, a for-profit company that if they don't do good and they don't train your kids, we don't pay them anymore and they run out of business until a better school opens up. But that notion right there really applies to every system yeah. we have right? yeah exactly that's what every, i'm saying you every single to... system but with the education i would go as far as think, think about of... john jay when we went to john jay how bad was that school i know but like it was bad for generations before they closed it down generate i know people that are way older than me they went to jay they're like that's a bad school yeah no no it's it's definitely bad but i feel like because of technology because of what we experienced through covid and this homeschooling i think that education can be i see the need for a, a school and a setting of bringing kids together socially so we could mess with each other you know look at us we're doing this thing together but i don't think it it falls under the model that we have right now I don't think it has to be this. I don't know. I just feel like. You think the kids go into a building? You don't think we should do that? No. And I don't know. So it would be a building, but just not the format that we have it in. I think that's why I like the ideas of private schools, because they can all experiment with different ways. And then once one school gets one that's really good, it's profitable for another school to copy them. So whatever school does it the best. For other schools to make money, yeah. So like, you it know would the, make sense. They would have to copy it. You know, eighty-eight. Public schools don't have to do any of that. Eighty-eight. Yeah. Right here. Oh, Middle school. Yeah. Okay. I forgot we're in. One, Brooklyn. I forgot we're in Brooklyn. Who <laughs> <I was like, laughs> are you talking about? Like, oh, okay. So that school is one of the highest success rate schools for a minute, and one of the things that they they allow. Think about it in middle school. The kids go out for lunch. Yeah, they disappear. They, they, just, they, they let I them. would trust them to come back. That's mind-boggling. So this idea of, so school would be like two periods. You're meeting up in this. You're meeting up with your friends, and you're having this lecture, the school setting that you're doing, and then because you're elective or you're what you're looking into getting into, you're going into this factory and you're seeing how manufacturing of yeah. chocolates or something is. And that's your second, and that's your fourth and fifth period class. That that reminds me of the school that uh, Isaiah was in. They take him to they they uh -uh. constantly took him on trips. His class was to be on the boat and drive around Manhattan, and he was hands on. So yeah, so your two period your homeroom and your first two periods, which is are like the 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 fundamentals, like the you know, your English, yeah. your your math, reading, your writing. writing. You're there for the two periods. You're getting a, a simplification of that because you're still carrying. You're still learning of those things, the writing aspect, the mathematical aspect in your elective of what you're interested in. So you, you're into the, this and your your elective also counts as your 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 main courses because you're expanding. Like you're writing a paper about boats, you're writing a paper about art you're, or whatever you're into and, and you just keep going into that. And instead that's of, the hybrid of school. And instead of because I don't know if you've been watching. Schools, when they find out kids use AI to write reports, they kind of punish them. Literally. 
Yep. Instead of doing that, we should encourage them to learn how to use it because when they graduate and they go to their jobs, it's going to benefit them to use this technology to improve themselves. Exactly. It makes no sense to stop them from using it. There was a commercial. It, 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 the reason why I mentioned this is because the commercial was like, oh, you know, kids, you know, they need to be reached out to. And we have all the technology now to reach out. Use the technology and reach out to your kids. It's sort of that notion. It's like give them what they're going to be using regardless so they could get better at using it. Yeah. Yeah, why why are you stopping them from using this technology if they're gonna use it when they leave? So when it, it makes comes, no sense when it comes to education, how to fund that? That's something that everyone pays into. Yeah. Period. Well, that's why I think we should do a voucher system. It's the best way, a voucher system, because if you just pay the school anyway, then they're never gonna improve. But if you say, hey, if you got 10 kids, you get paid for 10 kids. If you got 20 kids, you get paid for 20 kids. If your school sucks, parents are going to take your kids out and they're going to put them into the better school. So your your budget is you wouldn't need, Eventually, you wouldn't need that if you found the system that is the most effective. Yeah, but the only way to do that is with competition. Right. And then once you have that format, that's the format for everyone. But it would happen automatically because, like I said, with the one school. That, that did good. They would want to. They're gonna it. copy it. And they're gonna. They're all gonna agree. Like this is the best way. We have to. Right now, there's not. That's never gonna happen in public school, because they don't need to find the best way. They leave it up to one teacher in one classroom to figure out what's the best way for you to do it. Meanwhile, the rest of the school sucks. And what you know what I'm saying? That but if it was teacher. profitable for for the school to do good, they would. The school would figure out a way. How can we copy this teacher and spread it? You know what I'm saying? There's no reason for them to do that right now. They're like, we're getting money anyway. We're, the, we got the budget. Make sure we spend all the money. Yeah, that's every that's department. It. Exactly. That's every single department. So now, if 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 we cut the budget of all these departments, we have all this surplus of money now, you know what we can do with it? We can invest it into freaking medical. Now, nobody ever has to pay for a surgery for the rest of their life. Forget about that. Mental help. All that. We can pay for all that. The mental help is like the worst right now. The worst. So if yeah, we, that surplus too. of money, we invest it into the populace. You know what I'm saying? Are you, you know, if somebody's sick, let's say somebody's overweight, okay? And as an American, as America, it'd be beneficial to have healthy populace. So we go to that person, be like, hey, look, it looks like you're overweight. This is what America offers. We can offer you a five week program where you can leave your job for five weeks and you don't have to worry about losing your job. We put you into a camp. We get you, you know, fed right. We put, put you into a habit. Treadmill. We put you into a habit. Spin that wheel, baby. Yep. And then after those five weeks, you come back and now you already know, okay, I got to eat this. This is the way I have to eat. Because what it is right now is you got to figure it out on your own. How am I going to eat? I got to count calories. I don't know. How to... But imagine them putting you to a five week program that you get paid to be in and they teach you how to eat, how to shop, what's the right way to. That's shop. really vital, huh? It's important because if people are sick, our medical bills go up. Right, right, but I'm yeah. just saying like that's really not being taught, huh? No. I was taught. I was. I, I guess I'm. I'm. I. I really gotta count my blessings because I was yeah. taught early. Like yeah. you gotta keep these chichos, nene. Yeah. Well, none of that. None of that. No, we didn't even talk about this. When we were kids, it was don't eat fat because it makes you fat. Now that we're adults, it's no fat's okay. Don't eat sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, we, our food pyramid was way different when we were kids. The food pyramid now is different. In yeah, fact, yeah. they don't even have a pyramid. They have like a circle now. What oh, I'm saying is that, that, yeah, it's a totally different thing. You know what I'm saying? But that's because we didn't do the food pyramid because that's the best option. We did the food pyramid because one doctor said this is the right way to do it. And we all copied it. There was no competition of ideas. It was no, the government paid this guy to do it and he's the one that's going to put it out there. But if there was a competition, just like you see on TikTok, how do you lose weight? The best way. If we find out what is the right way, we're going to all do it. Yeah, you, you, you can't do a homeschooling with kids uh, indefinitely. That's not the model. The model has to be a hybrid of, of of going into a classroom social setting to build the people environment skills. Get rid of homework. My God. <clears throat> Get rid of homework and make the other thing where you're you're actually getting a taste of, of what that thing that you're interested in. Maybe it changes, but... Add, add freaking shop back to school. You know what I'm saying? So you can learn something. Uh, home ec. Remember home ec? It doesn't exist anymore. Word. Add all wow. that crap. We need this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Put all we got rid of that because of budget cuts. 
especially if we're planning to cut all the nations off and go solo. Meanwhile, I seen charter schools that teach kids how to bake. Yeah. Because why? Because they're making money off it. So they're like, this parents love when we teach their kids how to bake. So we're going to keep the program up. We're going to teach kids how to bake. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, that's, uh, I think that's it. That's uh, Soto for uh, president. President 20 something. Eight. 2020. Damn, that's, <laughs> that's how you know. Time. Maybe he shouldn't run because he doesn't know which year it is. 2028. God, bro. And also, too, the president, the president doesn't have to be the smartest person in the room, but they do have to be the person that's willing to listen to all the smartest people in the room. But that's because yeah. if they don't want to hear what the smart people got to say, then what what are, you, what are you doing? Yeah, what are we? You're doing? the dumbest one here, and you don't want to hear the smart guys. What's the point? At least if you're willing to listen to everybody and be like, okay, I would even bring them all together in one room and be like, all right, but you told me this and you told me this, they're opposite. Why don't you guys talk to each other? Yeah, fight with each other. Tell fight them with each other wins. and let's figure out, yeah, maybe you guys can negotiate and figure out what's the best option and then come back to me. That way they both agree. You know what yeah, I'm if you don't win or you don't win, win together. Yeah. Come Fig- up with another figure plan. Figure it out, yeah. And then you get a third guy to be like, hey, examine what their freaking thing is and then get back to me. That way you make... It's not that you're making a decision based on your own. It's you're making a decision based on the facts. Yeah, you're making a concise decision, yeah. and it benefits everybody, home. even the people. And you're not doing shit; they're doing it for you. Yeah. You're just sitting back, like your yeah, your job is literally to you're the supervisor. Yeah, and then so, if you want, you could take the credit out. Yeah, yeah I did this. This, this is what Go I came up with. Again. Yeah, I, I I think if I was to be president for my second term. When it's time for me to run again, I would run again for sure. When it's time for me to run again, I might even say, hey, if I lose, I'll even stick around and teach the other guy how I did it. I'll stick around for an extra month. I'll stick around for an extra month and I'll just hang out with him and teach him how I did it. And then whatever he decides to do is on him. If he wants to accept this offer, that's on him. But I'm willing, even if I lose, I'm willing to teach him everything I did and how I did it. And then he does whatever he wants from that point forward. Mm. Instead of resetting or take it or leave it. Yeah, take it or leave it. I'm just telling you, I'm you... the guy. I'm willing to offer it. America rent tax free. I'm not gonna. Don't pay me for it. I'm just doing it out of my own pocket. You know what I'm saying? I'll just stick around for a month and I'll tell him what to do. And, but you know what happened? The Democrats or the Republicans? Like, he doesn't want to leave office. He's been holding on to this. He's, you know. How are we gonna get him out the White House? We need the military intervention. He's a king now. Yeah. See? Oh. That's the propaganda, right back mm, to it. Mm, mm, mm. Always <laughs> goes back to it, baby. Yeah, I think that's it. That's it. Vote for me. I said I'm ready. It's a scary job, man. That's a scary job. Oh. You imagine this. They tell you, yo, there's a guy. He's a terrorist. He kills hundreds of people. He's making a plan to kill hundreds more. He's here right now. We know he is. We got the information. We have his location. We have him on the monitor. We can drop a bomb on him right now and right kill now. him today. You're seeing him on the screen. But he's in a wedding with a lot of kids. Are you going to let him kill those thousands of people? Or are you going to kill him right now? You're going to kill a couple kids for sure. Do you drop that bomb, Mr. President? We need him. We need that. He's only going to be there for another hour, Mr. President. We need to find out now. And now you got to come up with a decision like that. This is why I couldn't do it. And then what's going to happen when it's time for you to run again? He's a child killer. You never win. You never damned win. if you do, damned if. And that's why certain files should never be taken to Mar-a-Lago yeah. or Biden's home with his son's laptop. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Just keep it in the White House. Yo, and, and that's still going too, right? It's too much. So much. You know what makes me do when I think about everything that's going on in regards to the looking into Biden, looking into Trump, I think about damn because the other presidents in the past were getting away with murder. <laughs> they must have, bro, because yeah. no one was looking into them. Yeah, they didn't have computers. None of that. People were just yeah. And who was looking into them? Nobody. It's the president. It's the, it's the king. He's it's the king, king president. Have some respect. <laughs> Sit. Have some respect for the president. Yeah, then it would have been dope to be running shit back then. I know. That's oh, the- my God. That's where corruption comes. The basement. Base. Base. There'll be paint next time. 
Alright. Oh, you never pressed record. Got you. Nah, press that. Yo, what up, everybody? If you like what you saw, please click on some of the video links on the side. And please support our channel by liking, subscribing, and leave a little comment. And maybe we'll respond back to you. And hopefully, you'll be a guest on our next episode. <laughs> Disrespect, turn to God to disaffect. That's worth the Trump knowledge. Inspect to interject on what the youngest spit in on spitting for where the sacred text again.